Newly reported COVID cases in Hamilton are the highest among kids and teens for the first time during the pandemic. Here's another one. Uh, Children under 12 now have the, high, have the highest rates of infection among any age group at Alberta, CTV's Bill Fortier reports. Huh. Um, more evidence, this time from Canada, that child COVID hospitalizations are wildly exaggerated. Quote, just over half of children and youth reported were admitted specifically for COVID-19. In the remaining cases, children and youth were in hospital for reasons other than COVID-19, such as fracture, and were found to have SARS-CoV-2 upon routine screening so-called incidental infections. Oh, good thing you broke your leg, kid. You got COVID, right? Totally believable, eh? Here's Matt Walsh talking to, uh, this is not a Vax Pass. Oh, this is kids. This is uh, Matt Walsh talking to his um, kids school board. And this is in the States, but it's applicable here. And it doesn't have anything to do with vaccine passports. It has to do with gender ideology being pushed on kids. Here we go. Matthew Walsh. I would thank you all for allowing me to speak to you tonight, but you tried not to allow it, yet here I am. Now, you only give us 60 seconds, so let me get to the point. You are all child abusers. You prey upon impressionable children and indoctrinate them into your insane ideological cult, a cult which holds many fanatical views, but none so deranged as the idea that boys are girls and girls are boys. By imposing this vile nonsense on students to the point even of forcing young girls to share locker rooms with boys, you deprive these kids of safety and privacy and something more fundamental, too, which is truth. If education is not grounded in truth, then it is worthless. Worse, it is poison. You are poison. You are predators. I can see why you try to stop us from speaking. You know that your ideas are indefensible. You silence the opposing side because you have no argument. You can only hide under your beds like pathetic little gutless cowards hoping we shut up and go away. But we won't. I promise you that. Thank you for your time and all. <laughs> no, I don't. I agree with him. I don't think we will go away. Here is um, a doctor who is concerned about, um, well, there's like, it's four minutes. Well, the whole interview is 10 minutes. Well, the first two minutes are an ad for something. But anyway, um, I know, me too, sorry. Um, but still, the it's worthwhile. She's hesitant about getting kids vaccinated. I just think it's poignant, so we'll listen to some of it until it stops making sense. But f from four minutes to eight minutes, totally worth your time. Go, go listen and about only half of those are because of COVID. And that's with a denominator over 10 million children. So context is really important, and it's sometimes hard. We're overwhelmed with news, and unfortunately, and I know they're the media, but unfortunately the media tends to have that one anecdote or that one story or that one mm -hmm. really alarming headline, and it's hard to sometimes take that step back. And so... Yeah. And, and this brings yeah. me to the vaccines, because, of course, the question is, what's the objective of vaccinating? And I have, and I find myself in a very odd position. I'm an infectious disease physician. And obviously, I'm extremely pro-vaccine. I think the COVID vaccine for adults fundamentally changed the face of what we're dealing with. And I have actually, you know, in my extra time, have actually spent a lot of time in the vaccine clinics uh, helping out with vaccination. But I do hesitate with the kids. The, the study that Pfizer has has, 2,268 children, that means 1,134 got the vaccine. That's not a safety study. It's what we call an immunogenicity study. And and while I appreciate that we all want this over with, and there's, there's great enthusiasm and people have really stepped up to the plate to get vaccinated, I think a risk-benefit analysis and what the actual objective in terms of the course of the pandemic is, uh, is important before we talk about vaccinating children. And we can look at the United Kingdom. Their uh, Joint uh, Commission on um, Vaccination Immunization actually recommended against vaccinating teens, though the government uh, ended up going against them and uh, recommending one dose only, not two, but one dose only for teens. Uh, and we have other countries like Scotland, or not, sorry, not Scotland, but uh, Denmark and Norway that have essentially stopped all all. Restrictions. Sweden is going to be stopping all restrictions on the 29th of this month. And they're not saying COVID is gone. COVID is very much here to stay, but they're saying that it's now reached an endemic stage where we need to learn to coexist. And I guess for me, it feels that in Canada and in Ontario, we should be having these conversations. We should not polarize ourselves to that we're either anti-vax or pro-vax. 
because that really ends up putting us into positions yeah. where we're not able to have conversations. Well, sadly, though, I think we already are at that point. It doesn't help that uh, Justin Trudeau politicized this so heavily during the um, election campaign. But, you know, uh, Dr. Davila is full steam ahead. She's already mandating this with the province, uh, you know, and there are going to be a lot of parents who, you know, are listening to this saying, well, hold on a second. If, if primarily older people are getting COVID, they are the risk. Um, then why, and Dr. Davila, I should point out, also said today that kids are not spreading this in school, that the cases are coming in from homes right. of unvaccinated folks. And so, you know, why then would we push so quickly to get those under 12 vaccinated? Uh, and this is where I, I feel I'm ambivalent because as an infectious disease physician, I should be very pro-vaccine. But I do think with kids, we should actually make sure we have proper safety studies, we know that it's not common, but the risk is about 1 in 6,500 in Ontario. If you look at public health Ontario numbers for myocarditis or pericarditis in teenage boys, um, the most recent report from Public Health Ontario uh, from September uh, 18th. So while these cases are for the most part mild and we, we know how to deal with it, it is still an adverse effect and we have no idea to what extent it may or may not happen in younger children. We don't know if it'll be more severe. We don't know if it'll be less severe. It just feels to me that given that COVID is so unlikely to cause a problem in children, that recommending a vaccine for a parent who wishes to, to have their child vaccinated with proper informed consent, I have absolutely no concerns about that. But that's slightly different than mandating it for parents who saying, you know what? I want more safety data yeah. because really we've only been vaccinating kids since since maybe mid spring, if that. Less yeah, well, no question. So they carry on. I'm, I'm sorry, I did show the whole four minutes, but it's it's so important and context is important. I don't want to pull something out and make you think that I'm trying to misrepresent what she's saying. I'm not. I'm not. So listen to it all. Listen to the whole thing. Um, 